It is a cold day in Austin, Texas. It's below 40. I know you northern builders are laughing at me, but you know what I'm talking about. That weather changes where last week your peeling sticks worked just fine, and this week they became stick and peels. On the build show today, we're going to show you how to solve that. Today's episode is sponsored by Polywall. Let's get going. Well, it's sunny today, but believe it or not, it's cold, and I'm a little bit of a wimp, so I actually set up today's build show in my new studio space rather than out on the job site today. So let's go back to my new studio, and we're going to talk today about uh, peel and sticks and how to prevent them from turning into a stick and peel. I think you guys have seen The Office before, but what you haven't seen is this my brand new studio space. Check this out. Isn't this awesome? There's Joey over there. I got Andrew and Dan in the audience today. And here's what I've got for you right now. And that's my mock-up. All right, guys. So here's what we got going on. Primers and peeling sticks. So oh, let me shut this door while we're talking. So when you're out on the job site, weather starts to get cold. Really, we're talking about anything really below 40. Those peeling sticks that you put on the night before, you may come back to the job site and whoop, they've actually done the opposite of peeling stick. They've been a stick and peel. Now, how do you prevent that? Now, this video is sponsored by Polywall. We're going to show a bunch of their products. But this is good information for you as a builder, whether you're using their products or not, because we're all building through the wintertime. And you need to know this information. I'm going to give you some good building science. And also, in particular, these primers that we're going to talk about today from Polywall, they can be used really with competitors' products. Now, here's the mock-up. And let me first talk to you about the stick and peel thing. So what I did here is I used two different primers on both sides of this wall. We've got OSB and plywood, you know, the two typical sheathings you're going to see out there on the job site. And with those sheathings, you can see in this section here, I've got no primer. And then I used this pink primer from here over. Now this pink primer is this right here. This is Polywall's Home Stretch Liquid Adhesive WB, uh, WB standing for water-based. And then on the other side, we've got a clear primer. Now this clear primer is a solvent-based primer, meaning that not water-based, not, uh, not as worried about temperature or freezing weather. You're going to notice on this other one, it's going to say keep from freezing. That's because water freezes at 32, just like you don't want your acrylic latex paints sitting out to freeze. Same with that one. Now this one on the other hand is solvent based and solvents can go lower than 32 degrees without freezing, but that doesn't mean you necessarily want to apply it in that really, really cold weather. Now on this solvent based one though, you're going to see a couple of warning labels on the top and you need to be mindful of those. Solvent based adhesives, we need to make sure that we're not uh, smoking, then we're not welding, then we're not doing any hot work, meaning no open flames when you're using those. And also, uh, when you're finished using them on a job site, you need to make sure that your rags are not in the corner in a pile because those could self-ignite over time. You want to lay your rags out, let those air dry. Now, what's the deal with primer, though? Quick demo, and then we're going to get into this in a second, and I'll show you what we did. But first off, after I put the primer on both these, both the liquid and the solvent, I let it dry until it was tacky. Now, if it's warm out and you're using a primer, which I actually use a primer year round, it's kind of standard practice for me. And if you've seen my videos, you see me use a lot of this, this Aluma Flash Plus 40 mil asphaltic uh, membrane, meaning it's got an asphalt based adhesive. That's what we've been using for really for decades in America. It's a pretty old school tech. If you primer it, it sticks really well. Now in the winter time though, you pretty much need to primer it, especially when you've got that below 40 degree weather for that to really stick tenaciously to your substrate. Now we're in the office, we're in the studio, it's not 40 degrees in here, it's probably I don't know, 65 degrees. But what I did was I ran that primer on both sides. The pink again is the water-based, the clear is the solvent-based. And in good conditions, you know, above 60 degrees, it's going to cure or tack up, as we call it in the industry, in maybe 10, 15 minutes. If it's cold out, if it's below 40 or around 40 degrees, it's going to take longer, though. It could take 30 to 60 minutes. And it typically is going to take a little bit longer on the water-based 
to tack up, especially in colder weather, than it will in the solvent based. But after I did that, I ran two different types of flashings. We've got some butyl flashing and we've got some asphalt based flashing. Now these are two different technologies. Butyl is a little bit uh, newer of a technology and butyl actually can be applied in colder weather. So butyl is a great option if you know you're going to be flashing windows in that cold weather. Now this side of the mock-up, the left hand side that I did with plywood, it could be any one of the house wraps out there that you could use with these, the spun products, the woven products. And so I'm just showing you their flashings, but you'd also integrate a house wrap with this of probably a different brand or a different flavor. But I did want to show you how tenacious this butyl is sticking versus the asphalt with and without primer. So first off, let's try and pull these uh, flashings that were stuck onto primer. Now, again, when I rolled out that primer, I let it dry for about 20 minutes or so. On the water base, you're going to touch it to see if it feels dry. And on the asphaltic one, you're going to touch it to feel if it's tacky, if your fingers are kind of sticking on there. Now let's try and pull this. Let's see if you can actually watch me do this. <laughs> uh, there is not much pulling going on there. That is not coming off. I mean, I, I was able to pull the, uh, the top off and rip it apart, but this that you see here, oh my gosh, that is just absolutely tenaciously stuck. Now, and now it's also stuck to my fingers too. It sticks pretty darn well, doesn't it? Okay, next up, let's try the butyl based with no primer. That butyl, you can see it's sticking pretty darn well, actually. Now these conditions, again, are not super cold like it is outside. I probably should have done this portion outside, but you can see I can pull that off the wall. It's not easy to, it's stuck pretty tenaciously, but compared to that primer, that primer is not coming off. Let's try the same thing with the asphalt based. And I would typically think of asphalt based products without a primer as being less tenacious, less sticky. So let's again, give that a try here. And there you go. That's about what I'd expect. Now remember, OSB is a harder substrate to stick to as compared to, let's say plywood. That plywood's gonna have a smooth wood face. There might be some waxy resins in here. Now check this out there. You saw I was able to pull that off and not destroy it. It came, it had some resistance, right? It wasn't no resistance. But check this out. This is now the primered side. I used the Polybond primer over here. And let's try and pull this. <laughs> yeah, it is not coming off. Not easily anyways. I mean, I'm, as you can see, I'm exerting some force on there. Yeah, I might be able to, oh, here we go. Well, there's a good example. Look, I actually pulled OSB off. Now, I was able to get this off a little bit more intact. That aluminum facer probably gave it a little bit more uh, body than the polyethylene facer on the uh, Polywall Butyl Flash. But you can see what's happening here. Look, I'm actually pulling apart the wood fibers. That is not coming off the wall, guys. I liken a primer with peel and stick to a Formica countertop. I don't know if you've done those before, but I've done a bunch over uh, on my houses over the years, typically my laundry tops. When you do a Formica countertop, you prime the substrate, you prime the back of the Formica, and then when you stick that Formica down, there is no repositioning it. There is no pulling it off. It is stuck tenaciously, sticky on sticky, and that's exactly what we're talking about here. When we primer this, sticky on sticky. Now this is actually my usual method on a lot of my jobs in the South. Check out my other video, I'll put a link in the description, where I talk about the science behind using a zero perm product like this. But this is Alumiflash Plus. This is a zero perm product, aluminum facer, which means that I actually have a two year exposure rating. I, if I've got a long project and I know that my cladding's not gonna be on for a while, perfect one to use. A lot, a lot of high end builders in Texas are using this. And what I'll do is I'll start at the bottom of the wall and I'll come up, I'll stop just shy of my window opening. And then here's a cool product from Polywall. I've got a little sample of it right here. This is their arc flash, and they sell this in different sizes as well. This is the six inch arc flash, but this is a flexible flashing. And you can see on this six inch model, I came into the sill about three inches, and then it went over top of my lower letter, layer. We're always gonna go over top of what's below us. I also used a primer on top of that aluminum, and you can see now, once I did that, 
that arc flash is not coming off. It is really, really stuck on there. That is not gonna peel off on me in any way, shape, or form. Then I came up the wall with a six inch roll of the Aluma Flash Plus. They're gonna sell this Aluma Flash Plus in six inch, nine inch, and 12 inch rolls, as well as the 36 inch roll, which you're gonna use on the body of your project. I'm gonna come up the jam, and then lastly, I'm gonna do the head. I'm also wrapping that in, and on this corner here, because I've got that flexible flashing, I'm not worried about water penetrating that corner, but this corner here, I've got a cut section where I cut this straight piece and folded it in, and then I've got a cut for this straight piece. So what I'm gonna wanna do is use some of this. This is their fluid applied product. It's called Blue Barrier Joint and Seam Filler 2200. If you haven't seen this before, this is a sausage uh, gun. I'm gonna drop it in there. I'm gonna put a hole or two in the top just so I can get it out. Nothing like a good live demo to uh, make sure that I actually know what I'm doing out on the job site. And we're gonna put our cap in. These caps have a, uh, a silicon release, or silicone, however you pronounce it, release agent on the inside of there so that if I've got leftover material, I can peel that out later. But you can see I've cut an angled tip on there. And this is what I'm using a lot on my job site. Uh, and if you've seen my other video on how to install a window with the Luma Flash Plus, I'll also put a link to that in the description. You're going to notice that I use this a lot on my jobs. Anywhere I've got cut edges or I've got anything I need to detail. The other place I can use this on, if I'm worried about it, uh, is I can use this on my joints as well. It's going to kind of stitch down that joint between those two. And even though I've got primer and sticky on sticky, if I put that extra adhesive on there, I never have to worry about it. Okay, what else did I miss, guys? I think I got it. Let me, let me kind of review a little bit what's happening on this side of the window. This would be like if I was using this Beauty Flash, like I said, with a standard house wrap, you know, a, a spun bond. I don't want to say the names, but you know what I'm talking about. What you might do is put the house wrap on first, cut that house wrap back two inches so that you could put your jam protection on first. Again, we're gonna go sill and then jam. And then when we actually set our window, this isn't a window setting video, so I'm not gonna go through all the steps. But what we're basically gonna do is once we set our window, then we're gonna come back with another layer of Beauty Flash here on the jams and another layer on the head. Now my house wrap would be flapped up. I would do my jams first and lay that over the jam. Then I'd go over the head, I'd flap my house wrap back down and I would tape with the house wrap tape, that corner cut seam, they call that sometimes your upside down martini glass, and then that window is gonna be flashed in. I think that's it, guys. Uh, for more information on this, go to the Polywall website. I'll have a link in the description below. A lot of people are stocking this Polywall product, but you can also buy it online, so if you're in a place where you can't find that locally, don't hesitate to buy this online. That's one beauty of this company. Polywall is an employee-owned Texas company. I've been friends with these guys for a long time. I've actually been using Aluma Flash Plus for about 10 years on my job. And again, because I've been priming it, I use it in all kinds of locations, and it sticks tenaciously. I've never once had it blow off a house or peel off a house because I'm using that primer. Hopefully you learned something on today's video, though, that would translate to you whether you're using their products or not. And remember, when it's cold outside, you got to go with that primer. Now, if you're using other people's peel and sticks, you could also probably use this primer, but you might check with their tech department just to make sure. But if it's an asphalt-based or a butyl-based, these are going to work really, really well. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, sign up for our newsletter for the Build Show Network. We're publishing five days a week to Build Show Network. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.